वेलकम टू अ फ्रेश एपिसोड ऑफ एविएटर टॉक्स विथ अस टुडे इज कैप्टन आर्यन उपशम सेकंड ऑफिसर विथ एयर एशिया इंडिया हाय देयर कैप्टन वेलकम टू द एविएटर डॉट इन कैन वी हैव अ क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ योर्स सच एज योर डेजिग्नेशन योर होम टाउन एंड करंट एयरलाइन फ्लाइंग विथ हाय गाइस माय नेम इज आर्यन उपशम एंड आई एम फ्रॉम मुंबई obviously just like any other course you have to study but maze bhi bahut aata hai bahut maze kar raha hai it's amazing so like an insight is like for example there's a point in your flying training which is the most uh, fun part for sure is when you're doing your cross countries so uh, you just hop on an aircraft fill fuel and just fly all over the state leave the state fly to another state it's it's so good is definitely the best experience so basically i did my uh, flight training immediately after my 12th standard so obviously while i was doing my flight training my friends were in their colleges someone was doing engineering someone is doing bmm someone is doing bms so you know while my friends in the morning used to be all fussy wake up and like are college ka lecture jana hai i used to wake up and be like let's fly an airplane today that's basically what happens in flying school and if you if you if you're passionate and if you love it is the best thing ever is the best thing ever so my first flight experience was uh, pretty interesting it was something which i was looking forward to since a long long time the instructor actually on my very first flight was like fly do just see what you can do like you know just experience what it is like to be behind the controls of an aircraft phenomenal phenomenal it's so good and so good Also, as a first flight, you can also consider your first flight as a solo. My first flight as a solo was so much fun. So I luckily I was very confident about what I was doing. I was very confident about my solo even before I went for my solo. I was ready for that day. I was prepared. I knew how to fly. I I was I was confident. So I remember when I took off, I had this big white smile on my face. And I remember making my first crosswind turn, first downwind, everything I remember. And then Tao was like, "How are you holding up?" And I'm like, "I'm doing great, dude." And then he's like, "Okay, whenever you're ready, turn base." <laughs> what an experience! What an experience! And I remember smiling throughout the flight. I did uh, three takeoffs and landings. That's what you have to do in your first solo. And I came back, and all my buddies are like, "Dude, you did it!" Like I'm like, "I did it!" And like for me, it was such a big milestone because I'd been waiting forever. for this day great experience great experience and you just need to study at the right time and fly enjoy passionately what exactly is the role of second officer what phases of flight does a second officer takes control at so a second officer is someone who is new to the company basically it's a person who has just joined the company and till the time he gets released as a first officer he or she gets released as a first officer During that whole time, the designation which you hold is that of a second officer. So it's more or less a training phase. Uh, this is when you get yourself familiar with the SOPs, get familiar with line flying. It's the first time where you're actually going to be in a real aircraft, in a real Airbus A320, understanding how it flies, understanding what things actually happen in real life. It's very different from flight school for sure. So uh, yeah, that's more or less what a second officer does. So as a second officer, you go through uh, various stages of training. Like you start off sitting on the third seat, then you do something known as a base check, where you go and do six takeoffs and landings in an empty aircraft, but you're flying the aircraft. And then you have uh, something known as your SLF, which is supervised line flying, where you're actually flying the aircraft with actual passengers. And there's a check pilot at the back who eventually goes away, and then you're flying with the trainer and everything. And then you get released as a first officer. So when does a second officer actually take uh, literally everything from your base check till your release? You're literally flying the aircraft through. So except your first few days, you're always flying the aircraft. Does flying ever get instinctive? 
Is it something you adapt in your daily routine like driving a car? How do you prepare yourself every time before flying? So according to me, flying is uh, definitely instinctive. It is like driving a car. Like when you're driving a manual car, you don't think right before you press the clutch, before you shift the gear. Flying is definitely similar. Like there's a point where you connect with the aircraft where you just know what you're doing. You just subconsciously, you know, react to a certain movement made by the aircraft. This is an example from flying school. So say you're coming into land, okay, your vertical stabilizer is like a big portion of your aircraft protruding out and it's definitely prone to winds. So like when it's gusting, so winds are going to hit the vertical stabilizer, so it's going to change the direction of your nose slightly. You just feel it as a pilot when you're behind the controls. So subconsciously, you know, you step on the rudder, straighten up the nose back with the runway. It's definitely instinctive in such a way. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how I relate my preparations for my flight like when I used to prepare back in the day for going to school the next day so like for example uh, back in school make sure your uniform is right you have the right books according to the timetable according to the subjects you have the next day in school flying is similar make sure your uniform is right everything's pressed everything's perfect it's ready for the next day your flight bag's full it, it has everything you need all your requirements are fulfilled just stuff like that very important preparation in my opinion is sleep you definitely should be well rested before a flight because in my personal opinion fatigue is the worst enemy of a pilot <laughs> it's not safe to be fatigued and go fly you should be at a hundred percent energy wise physically and mentally and definitely eat good food make sure you're healthy you're well rested just the basics here okay so what difficulties does a new candidate faces to get a job as a pilot if he or she is not from the cadet program so I'm not a current pilot. I did my CPL the conventional way. And uh, definitely from my personal experience, what I can say is that uh, it's the insecurity which gets to you. You know, like when you're in a flying school, you don't know what's gonna happen once you get out of here. You don't know what the future is like. When you're a current pilot, you more or less know that, you know, you will get into the airline. So, so that uncertainty factor is definitely one difficulty which you have to face as a conventional pilot. So one thing that uh, people should do effectively in order to get a job study hard be at your A game at any moment you don't know when any airline is going to come out with a vacancy you don't know how many people are going to give the exam you don't know how many people are they going to really induct in the end the point is you have to try your level best with 100% dedication to make sure that you are better or at least you feel that you are better than everyone else out there so there's a lot of competition and uh, the supply is too high and the demands too low so definitely it's all about keeping in touch with your studies being at your a game at any moment so secondly when an airline comes out with the vacancy you don't have enough time to prepare like you can't start from scratch and then be like right there in the end how much ever you study you have to be in touch with your subjects you have to keep studying you have to be at your a game till you get a job obviously once you land the job you have to study there also but in order to land a job, you have to be at your A-game at all moments. How are your roasters prepared? Are junior pilots treated equally in terms of choices and preferences? How is the flight duty time limitations taken care of? So your roster, just like any other line release pilot, there is nothing different. Same app, same format, same <laughs> everything is the same. Obviously, the amount of flying you get depends on a lot of factors. So definitely there's no difference in the rostering it's more or less the same procedure so preference is something like uh, preference between juniors and seniors i mean for example like if i want a particular base so for me in order to get that base first of all i have to be in the top in the seniority list to be chosen first before other people who joined after me they have to have a vacancy in that base for someone with my designation because you can only have a number like they plan for a number of people in a particular base so like that there is no discrimination but obviously your seniority list matters so junior senior depends on what term so it really depends on what aspect by you saying junior or senior but in the flight deck everyone's treated with respect everyone's given the same amount of love everyone talks to each other very respectfully there is no difference in how you're treated in the flight deck but preferences and everything it's it's same it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter in my opinion i think it's pretty fair and fair your FDTL is definitely, definitely stuck to, is definitely adhered to. Basically, it, you cannot cross your FDTL because you're flying with 
लाइन रिलीज पायलट्स राईट सो लाईन पायलट्स आर ऑब्व्हियसली फॉलोइंग एफ डी डी एल इट्स इलिगल नॉट टू युअर फ्लाईंग विथ दॅम सो दी ऑन ऑफ आर्स युअर फ्लाईंग इज विथ दॅम सो यू कॅनॉट रिली एक्सीड युअर एफ डी डी एल युअर ऑलवेज विद इन द लिमिट वॉट इज द मेजर डिफरन्स बिटवीन अँड ऑटो लँडिंग अँड मॅन्युअल लँडिंग अँड वॉट आर युअर सो द मेन डिफरन्स बिटवीन अन ऑटो लँड अँड मॅन्युअल लँडिंग इज जस्ट लाईक द नेम टेल्स यू इन अन ऑटो लँड इज द एअरक्राफ्ट विच इज फ्लाईंग इट्स एल्फ यू जस्ट हॅव टू सेट मॉनिटर द फ्लाईट पाथ मॉनिटर द सिस्टम्स मेक शुअर दॅट द एअरक्राफ्ट इज डुईंग वॉट यू वॉन्टेड टू डू ॲज अ पायलट मेक शुअर दॅट द एअरक्राफ्ट इज इन अ सेफ ट्रॅजेक्टरी अँड दॅट यू हॅव टोटल कंट्रोल ओवर द सिच्युएशन इन अ मॅन्युअल लँडिंग ऑब्व्हियसली दीज क्रायटेरियाज अप्लाय टू बट दर इज अ पॉईंट वे यू डिस्कनेक्ट दी ऑटो पायलट अँड यू ॲक्च्युली मॅन्युअली गो अहेड अँड फ्लाय अँड लँड दी एअरक्राफ्ट सो यू कॅन बेसिकली डिस्कनेक्ट दी ऑटो पायलट वेन यू हॅव द रनवेज अँड द पापी पापी इज आ प्रिसिजन अप्रोच पाथ इंडिकेटर these are lights which are located to the side of the runway which uh, help you come down in a safe and stabilized vertical profile or the second thing is that uh, you can disconnect the autopilot when you are at minimums or something so uh, what do i like better i actually unfortunately haven't done an auto land yet i'm not cleared for it yet hopefully soon we'll get there soon but i know one thing for a fact that if you give me a choice i definitely prefer flying an aircraft manually instead of you know using automation to land the aircraft because anyways in airline flying you're usually on autopilot the only times you actually have control of the aircraft is when you take off and landing so that one chance when you get to land the aircraft why do you want to auto land when you can manually land i'd go for manual landing for sure as uh, most of our viewers would be aspiring pilots what message you would like to give them any suggestions for early preparations so in my opinion flying is the best best means the best feeling ever known to mankind at least is the best feeling ever known to me my best i mean better than everything else okay it's so good so you know just the thought of being behind the control of like a 70 ton jet filled with like 200 lives and at your responsibility it's flying like 10 11 kilometers up in the sky almost at the speed of sound it's insane it's amazingly insane <laughs> it's so good one thing that i can definitely promise you that every second that you have waited for this every ounce of hard work that you have put into becoming a pilot and when you actually get it i promise you it's worth every bit it's really amazing So your passion can definitely build your wings. For me, it was all about passion. I wanted to become a pilot since I was barely what two or three years old. Like that's the age when you actually understand what a who a pilot is, what he's actually doing at work. That's something. That's the only thing I've ever wanted to do, and that's the only thing which you know I went ahead and pursued. Like I did immediately after my twelfth, as I told you. Like for example, my mother and father both are from construction. My father's a civil engineer. My mother's an architect. and then i just turned out to become a pilot you know and they are just like is a pilot kyun banna out of everything there are no pilots in my house i'm the only pilot in my family so yeah it's all about passion i for i went ahead followed my passion and one more thing back in the day i was an average student nothing extraordinary even my 12th standard marks were like very average nothing special but when i got into aviation it's the passion for the field where you actually you know start working hard basically when you're passionate about something and when you want to get somewhere during the whole journey you're so focused and you do it with so much ease with so much love because you're so passionate about it please pursue your passion i'm pretty sure every other pilot who loves his job is going to tell you if you're passionate about it do it it's the best field ever i promise you it's worth it one early preparation which i would definitely suggest uh, for people who want to join aviation as a pilot get a medical job Uh, just get that on paper that you know you're fit to fly there is no problem there is nothing all you have to do is you know complete the procedure then it's definitely something which i recommend everyone to do it at the soonest you don't require anything to do your medical anyone can just get up and do their pilot medical it's not a big deal get a medical second thing which i think is very important which people do not understand your lifestyle is very different your discipline in life is very different the way you perceive your job has to be very different so being a pilot is not just the job of flying an airplane it's a whole lifestyle your life revolves around your job your life is going to be very different from all your other friends who are not in aviation 
you have to be ready to be posted out of any city you have to be ready to work at all hours you have to have the discipline to you know maintain the right diet maintain good habits so you're medically fit to fly all the time you have to be ready for all the studying that's going to come in your way so basically imagine if you're like 40 something and everyone's like just chilling and hanging out at that point and then you know you're like into the book studying hard core many hours a day because you know like you have a sim check coming up or something so you be ready for this you cannot back out once again so for early preparations these are definitely some key points which are very important in my opinion and which i would recommend everyone to consider thank you captain for sharing your experience this will definitely help our viewers thank you so much everyone i hope i was helpful <laughs> to all the future pilots out there be focused be passionate and enjoy every minute of your flying school those are going to be the best days of your flying for years to come i promise you that and to all my other fellow aviators happy landings take care wish you clear skies and sunny days